we are given three events, A, B, C. Probability of A is given. Okay, let me just write down the information here. So question number seven. Probability of A is given to us as 0 0.8. The probability of B, this is given to us as 0 0.8. Four, and the probability of C is okay. C is unknown, and the probability of A union B this is equal to zero point nine five. So part one. Part one. Let's try to find A intersect B. I think this is okay. This is pretty easy. We're going to make use of this, right? So since we are given that the probability of A union B is equal to 0 0.95 and A union B is also A plus B minus A intersect B. This is equal to 0 0.95. Probability of A is 0 0.8. Probability of B is given to us as this. This is what we are supposed to be finding and it is equal to now 0 0.95. Five. So from here, we can find what is probability of A intersect B and this is equal to 0 0.25. And we are supposed to do a check to check whether A and B are independent. So to check whether they are independent, let's take the probability of A, multiply it to the probability of B because if they were to be independent, then the answer that I'm going to be expecting here should be equal to 0 0.25. So let's do a quick check. This is going to be equal to 0 0.8 probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. And this is equal to 0 0.32. It is not the same as probability of A intersect B. So our conclusion for this is A and B, they are not independent. Part 2. Part 2, we are supposed to state the range of values of C, which necessarily implies that A and C are not going to be mutually exclusive. For A and C to be not mutually exclusive, we can actually express that on a Venn diagram. So if A is here, then C cannot be touching A. Okay, C cannot be touching A. So we are going to try to look at the conditions such that this will not happen. We are trying to look at a situation where C, A and C cannot be mutually exclusive. So what we are going to do is, since this is going to be representing the probability for A, let's try to look at the probability of A prime. That means we look at the space, okay? When we draw a Venn diagram, our idea is to try to look at the area in the Venn diagram or the space that is in a Venn diagram to represent the probability. So let's look at the space that is outside A. And the space that is outside A is 1 minus probability of A. So it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.8. This is equal to 0 0.2. So the space that is outside, this space here, this space here is 0 0.2. Which means that if this space can house the entire C, then it is possible for A and C to be totally not overlapping, correct? So in order for this not to happen, okay, in order for the case where A and C are not going to be overlapping each other, in order for us to prevent this from happening, can you see that C should be strictly bigger than 0 0.2, correct? It must be strictly bigger than. It cannot be even equal to 0 0.2 because if C is equal to 0 0.2, it, can, it is also possible that they are... I mean, if C is equal to 0 0.2, then they are still, it is still possible that they will not be, uh, they, they will be, they will not be intersecting, okay? And we want to make sure that this will never happen. So by making sure that the area of C, which is the probability of C, is strictly bigger than 0 0.2, no matter how I'm going to be drawing it, it will overlap with the, the, this region that represents the probability of A. But let, let's, let's make sure that we are very, theoretically accurate here, okay? P or C. C is a probability. So a probability cannot exceed 1, correct? So I cannot leave this as my answer. My answer must be C. It is supposed to be strictly bigger than 0 0.2, but C can be less than or equal to 1. Okay, so C is going to be between 0 0.2 and less than or equal to 1. Next, part 3.
we will need the answer that we found in part 1. So let me just rewrite the answer here. Part 1, we have found that probability of A intersects B, this is equal to 0 0.25. Let's move on to part 3. Part 3, we want to find the probability of A intersects C. And this time, we are actually given uh, another new information, another new piece of information. Probability of C is now 0 0.45. Let me wrap it down here. So here, this is equal to 0 0.45, a new piece of information that is given to me. And we are also given this. We are also given that probability of C given A, this is equal to 0 0.45. Four, five. Probability of C given A is probability of C and A divided by the probability of A. So this is equal to 0 0.45. Probability of C and A is the same as probability of A and C. So this is going to be equal to 0 0.45 multiplied by the probability of A. And that is 0 0.8. So probability of A intersects C. This is going to be equal to 0 0.45 multiplied by 0 0.8. This is 0 0.36. Okay, so we have this now. And we want to then state the greatest and the least possible of A prime intersect B intersect C. We have seen this question a few times before in the past few A-level uh, papers. So we want to find the greatest and the least possible of this. Let's, let's get a visual uh understanding of you know this a prime intersect b intersect c so let me try to do a quick sketch of this let's say this is a let's say here we have here as b and let's say this is c so a prime intersect b intersect c is something that must be outside of a inside of b and inside c so it's going to be this region here. So this is probability of A prime intersect B intersect C. What is the greatest and the least possible value for this? So this is how I'm going to be analyzing the question. Okay, I'm going to focus on two things. Number one is I'm going to focus on probability of A intersect C because we have already calculated this, which means that we know that this region here, this region here, it is probability of A intersect C is a constant region, okay? This region here will have an area of 0 0.36. So we have this region here. And this is the first thing that I'm going to work on. The second thing that I'm going to work on is the region that is outside, which is actually this region here. Let me mark it down with, with red color. So it is actually this region here, here, here. Okay, this is the region that is also fixed. But this is the region that contains this that we are going to be finding. Let me find out what is this region first, okay? This region is A prime intersect C, this red colored region. So what is the probability of A prime intersect C? This is going to be taking probability of C, which we now know it is 0 0.45 minus away this intersection which is this, so minus away probability of A intersect C. So it is going to be 0 0.45 minus away 0 0.36. This is equal to 0 0.45 minus 0 0.36, 0 0.09. Okay, so we now know that this region here is 0 0.09. And can you try to imagine together with me, when will this shaded region, which is according to what the question wants, okay, when will this shaded region be the least possible? It will be the least possible if I'm shift if I were to just shift this out more and more away from this B. Okay, we must retain this region. So this region is still 0 0.36, but we're going to try to shift this out. Okay, we're going to shift this out. Which means that if, okay, if, if it is actually possible for me to shift this entirely out, then what is the smallest possible for this? Zero. It's just going to be zero. That means if I can shift until I achieve something that is like this. Let's say here is A. Let's say here is B. So if I can shift it until when I achieve something that is like this. Okay, this is C. 
So this region, which is the intersection between B and C and outside A, there's no such region anymore. If I can just shift this entirely out. So if this can happen, then great. The minimum possible is zero. Let's try to see whether this can happen or not. Because in order for us to check whether this can happen or not, we need to look at the amount of space that is outside so that I can shift this out. So the amount of space that is outside, which is this A prime intersect B prime, the amount of space that is outside. Okay, let me just draw it here. Let's say this is A, let's say this is B. So we're going to be looking at this region here. Okay, this is the amount of space that is outside. So this is also easy to calculate. It is just 1 minus probability of A union B. So it's 1 minus 0 0.95. This is 0 0.05. Okay, too bad. Too bad because there is not enough space to contain this part, this red colored part, which is supposed to be shifted outside. Okay, it is not, it's not able to contain because the region that is outside, this region that is outside, is only 0 0.05. And this red colored region, which is going to be constantly shifted out, is going to be more, 0 0.09. But uh, we can definitely shift it out as much as possible. So if I were to shift it out as much as possible, that means we want to make sure that the whole thing is going to be such that this region here, this region here is go going to occupy everything that is outside. So this region here is going to occupy the entire 0 0.05. It's going to occupy the entire region that is outside. Because when this can happen, then this shaded region is going to be the minimum. So this is how we're going to find the minimum of probability of A prime intersect B intersect C. It is going to be equal to 0 0.09 minus 0 0.05 and this is going to be equal to 0 0.04 okay let's discuss when will it be the maximum possible it will be the maximum possible again if i were to just keep shifting this keep shifting this until when it goes entirely into b this i think it will give us the maximum possible for this shaded region i'll shift this until this region here goes entirely into this part of b Okay, which means that I'm going to check whether this is possible. This case. This is, let's say, A. This is, let's say, B. I want to check whether it is possible for me to shift C until when I get this. Okay, where this region is still going to be the region that is outside A and inside B and inside C. Because if I can shift this in, then this will be the maximum possible. So for me to check this, I need to know whether there's enough space here. Enough space that is outside A and inside B for, for this curve C to be shifted inside. So to do this, I'm going to try to check what is the probability of A prime intersect B. So A prime intersect B is going to be probability of B minus away probability of A intersect B. And this is going to be probability of B is 0 0.4 minus away probability of A intersect B, which was what we have found in part 1. So minus away 0 0.25. This is equal to 0 0.15. And this is possible to contain this region, this red colored region. Okay, because this is bigger than 0 0.09. Okay, so now we know what is the maximum possible of probability of A prime intersect B intersect C, which is this case, where we try to shift this entire thing inside. So what is this? This is actually the 0 0.09 that we have calculated, right? This is the space that is outside A and inside B at the same time. So the maximum possible is going to take up just this, this value. It is 0 0.09.